Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful day to be alive again. And uh, <clears throat> we are giving glory to the one who deserves all our praises this morning, the Lord Christ himself. Amen. I want to talk with you this morning about healing. You know, you've heard me t say it before, over and over again. Um, the healing power of God. What is it? Is it available to each one of us? Or is it just something that is available to a select few? Does God heal today? Hmm? Does God really intervene in the affairs of men today when it comes to sickness and disease? Does God intervene today in the lives of children that are their bodies riddled with cancer i'm going to turn something up here a little bit their bodies riddled with cancer does god intervene good morning everyone does god intervene when the christian that has been ill sick uh, or comes uh, is overcome with a serious debilitating disease or even one does not so debilitating but a nuanced illness can or does god intervene in those situations have you ever sat back and thought about that uh, can or does god do something about the things the calamities of sickness that happened to good people in the earth. That happened to his children in the earth. You know, as a matter of fact, I want to put a scripture up here quickly. I'm not going to put it on your screen. I just want to put it on mine um, for the time being. Um, but do, have you ever thought about it? Just sat back and, and wonder about your neighbor that just died, that's been in church for 30 years wondered about that child that you heard about that was just killed in an accident whose mother and father seem to be devoted to the church um, or who has a disease but their parents seem to be good people. Hmm? Is this something that ever comes to your mind? Is this something that you ever really consider? What about what's going on in certain parts of the world, the debilitating actions of people that have caused children to be ill, children to die, children to have all kinds of issues come against them. Is God really in charge of our world? And I'm not trying to be in any way, one second, I'm not trying to be in any way against God and against what the Lord represents, but I'm asking you to think about something for a moment. Because many of us would espouse or we would make statements that the world doesn't understand. We say, well, God is in charge. And then someone would ask you, if God is in charge, well, why do we have all the ills? and all of the challenges and all the things going on around us. Hmm? Why do we have all the diseases that we have? You know, there is a reason for them to ask questions like that. Because if we say God is in charge and we make statements like uh, when a young child um, dies, that God wanted a rose in his garden so he took this child. Or we will make statements like, uh, like this when someone dies um, that you know, it seems to be a premature death because that individual maybe shouldn't have died just then. They have more work to do. They have other things going on in their lives. There are opportunities. They are on the cusp of great things. They're on the verge of new things. They have vision. They have dreams. 
you know, they are in careers that are beneficial to society, and all of a sudden, what? They're gone. And one of the statements that we as Christians have the tendency of making in that scenario is, well, God knows best. So God, yeah, we are then saying that God um, decided to whack them and or allow them to be whacked, you know. Um, and so what do we think about these things? How do we handle it? How do we reconcile a good God with these kinds of things going on around us? Hmm? If God is good, why do I get sick? And why do I not? Uh, why, why is healing sometimes seemingly fleeting? I pursue healing, but healing is maybe a step away from me. You see, a lot of us, we lack the understanding. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, we are Christians, we're heading to heaven, let's say. You know, we are born again, we are alive unto God, we are doing wonderful things for Christ. But that doesn't mean that we have the counsel of God in every aspect of life that God desires us to have counsel. The Bible is not just a nice book with some nice words that only deal with finances, that only deal with a holiness from the perspective of maybe some of us think how we dress, maybe how we speak, how we um, worship on a Saturday or a Sunday. We have the tendency of taking the Word of God and putting it in a box and only allowing a revelation within the context of the box that we have put God's word into. But there's more to God. There's more to God's word. We say, well, God is a good God. And yet we'll say, well, you know, some of us sometimes we'll call down death on people. Um, is he, and there is a consequence at times when death will come um, because of disobedience or because of the contenting On purpose but he may allow it and one of the reasons why he allows it is because we allow it it's because of the, the one reason one main reason number one reason why calamity strikes why accidents strikes why so many things strike us is because of ignorance the scripture says, my people, now listen to what God says. This is not my words. The scripture says, my people, and most of you can finish it, my people perish. In the King James it says, my people, that's Hosea 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed. My people perish for a lack of of knowledge. Good God. Wow. My people are accident prone for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 6 is not my word. My people are destroyed with cancer for a lack of knowledge. My people, and we're going to pray in just a minute over some scriptures and make some declarations over the next few days. We are going to be looking at this scripture by scripture and making some declarations 
over our own lives. Amen. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Well, what, what, what knowledge? We're going to look at that um, in Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to look at that in a few minutes. What is it that causes us to perish? Now, in that same scripture, Hosea 4, 6, it says, Now, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. The next thing in it, there are three things that the scripture talks about. Number one, it says we perish for a lack of knowledge. Number two, it says we perish because we reject knowledge. Oh, my God. We perish. See, Gail is on the job this morning. We perish for what? Rejecting knowledge. So I will come and I will begin to speak about the word and begin to speak about the power and begin to speak about the strength, begin to speak about the might of God. And, and I attempt to bring heaven's revelation to the earth, to you. I attempt to bring God's word and the relevance of his word to the issues of life confronting you uh, but you say well it's just the word of God well I'm tired well you know it's just that guy on Facebook or on television you know we use every excuse in the book to, to not participate and uh, you don't realize that this is now I have not used this term in recent or in recent times but God's word is preventive medicine. God's word to the Christian is prevention in action. Let me say that again. God's word in the life of a Christian is preventive measures that God has implemented and made available to you and I. Many Christians wait until the calamity strikes, until the issue arises, until the challenges come to get to the Word of God. But that is not the best of God. The preventive measures of God. You see, many of us, um, we, let's say if you live in the United States, the United States is not easily um, men and women in the rest of the world do not really readily attack the United States militarily or consider attacking the United States military because they are preventive or preventative measures that are in place that if you attack America you're going to be attacked if you do certain things against certain people you are going to receive the, re the repercussions of that and so um, and and so there are certain things in place to protect the United, the United States, certain things and laws to protect individuals in America. Well, guess what? There is the same thing for you as a Christian. The Word of God is preventive. Amen? The Word of God is a preventive measure. And so when God, let us think about Ava Grace for a moment. Ava Grace came into the life of, oh my goodness, Ava Grace came into the life of Gail Conan on the heels of Morning Prayer Live, where certain things that Gail needed to know were then becoming revelation in Morning Prayer Live, and she ran with it, she moved with it, and she is able to deal with the confrontation or the contending for the life of a two-year-old, now three-year-old. I, I think when Ava came to our knowledge, she was like 18 months. But now you think about it, she's now three years old. And uh, this neuroblastoma or whatever the particular disease is, if I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly or if I even have the right thing, but whatever that disease is, that scourge on humankind is...
But God is preparing each one of us to contend for the life of one another, to contend for the lives of our children, to contend for our own destiny, because our enemy, the satanic world, has already established some strategic things to destroy us. But God is giving us preventive maintenance. That is, he's telling us ahead of time. be done with better accuracy my god yes lord and so this morning then as we talk about this ava is stronger because gail is stronger <laughs> now and i'm not saying that gail should use this and get her head off big and you know and proud and all of that that's not the point that i'm making or for that matter, when any of you have prayed and joined with, with Gabriel. are ignorant the second one is that we reject knowledge amen and the third one is that instead of just rejecting instead of not having we fo have forgotten we have lost heart we have forgotten what God is doing amen yes um, sister there is a delay in the broadcast and in, at some point significant delays because of the problem with our internet service provider at any rate pray for us to get fiber optics over here at some point in time amen we are in the, the country the hinterland of jamaica amen now so hosea 4 6 some of us we realize my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they have they have what rejected what I have brought to them, says the Lord. And then in some cases they have rejected or they have forgotten the law of God. So that when we think about these things, what then with this mighty God, with this great God that we serve, why does it seem that we as Christians, we don't walk in divine health? as God says is our potential. We don't walk with the covering presence of the Holy Spirit as the 91st Psalm prophesies to us. We don't walk with the provision of God as the 23rd Psalm indicates we ought to walk with. We don't walk with health as James says, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. What, why is it? Well, let, let's take a look. 
for a few minutes at a scripture and then we will pray and make a declaration over our lives this morning and over our families this morning with the knowledge that will be imparted from the revelation in this word my god I, I, did you see that a while ago um, gail just said something that's important new knowledge is really the foundation of new revelation and new revelation is the foundation of greater power new knowledge knowledge relevant to your situation is the foundation of new revelation and new revelation is then the foundation of greater power and if you don't have revelation your power will be the same thing or your ability in christ your ability to walk in the knowledge of god will be the same as it was 10 years ago because that's where you were and 10 years has not changed things but in some instances 10 years has made things even get worse because we have forgotten what we learned 10 years ago. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. Let's get there quickly. Proverbs 4, verse 22. Um, actually, Proverbs 4, verse 20. Proverbs 4, verse 20. My God. Proverbs 4, verse 20. This is what it says. My son, and then this is generic. My son it could be my child proverbs 4 verse 20 my child attend to my words i'm going to read through it and, and i'll come back my child attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart now listen to this for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. My God, is this a powerful word or what? That's Proverbs 24, verse 20 through 22. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. My child, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Come on. This is an incredible scripture because if it tells me that the word of God is health to all my flesh, and it tells me that the word of God is life to me, then the issues and the challenges that I've been going through, God's desire is not for me to go through them. He says the word of God will allow me to skirt them, to walk over them, to handle them in a way from victory perspective not defeat or challenge perspective. Now, my friends, all of us, myself included, I am victorious in various aspects of my life and I'm developing my victories. I am, I am, you see this gray here and you see a little more of it these days, but I have been developing this and I have sometimes stepped back i've not pressed in i've not done what i ought to do the way i ought to do it and so the enemy comes in and takes the opportunity to slap me with something sometimes that's not god's best because you see the lord has already done it is, for example let me give you a, a good example of that right now none of you would get up and just walk out your house with just underwear on and go to work with just your underwear why um, God doesn't have to the Holy Spirit doesn't have to tell you put some clothes on the Holy Spirit doesn't have to tell you to you know get your hair combed the Holy Spirit doesn't have to tell you hey you need some shoes on your feet why because naturally there are built-in safeguards built-in 
instruction sets, built-in abilities in you to know what is right and what is wrong, to know how to conduct yourself. Let me tell you something, the Word of God is the same thing. They are built-in safeguards, they are built-in abilities, they are built-in things. But if you never know, if you never take time to study it, the reason why we put clothes on is because we have been culturalized to do that. In some cultures, they are very spartan in their clothing. They wear very little. But if they went into New York City or they went into <coughs> Washington, D.C., it would be an abnormal thing to see someone dressed the way they dress in the culture that they are. Well, we are in a different culture. We are in the culture of Christ. <coughs> and our culture dictates that there are certain parameters given by God for us to live our life that maintains a lifestyle of divine health, of divine blessing, of us always engaging the divine in our life. He is the protecting one. And so Psalm 91 is not a psalm we run to um, on the occasion or in the occasion when somebody is attacking us. Psalm 23 is not a psalm we run to. The Word of God generally is not something we run to when we have a particular need, but we allow God to prepare us. We are always being readied. We are always being readied. You know, I think it's the Boy Scouts that have a motto, always prepared. And my aunt, uh, as a child, one of my aunts, um, uh, Lucille Morrison, I, whenever I'd go over to our house to visit, um, actually, she took me to school. She was the vice principal of the school I attended. And I would go, go to her home in the mornings, and um, I would ride with her to school. Um, on her desk, uh, she had a statement, a motto of her life. And she said, um, f you know, um, if I don't prepare or, or failing to prepare is preparing for failure. Failing to prepare is preparing for failure. We have to be prepared and God is always preparing us. Again, my child, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So I can, I mean, I have my hourglass is on the table here. I can declare as much as I want. I declare that I am the healed of God. However, I can make that declaration, but that declaration of my mouth is not founded on the integrity of the revelation of God's word that talks to the issue of healing. And so then my words are empty words declared in an empty atmosphere and have no result. If I'm failing to prepare, I'm preparing to fail. My God. I learned that when I was maybe about eight or nine years old, when I visited my aunt. And that, that statement, I think I wrote, it in, I wrote it in every notebook that I had going to school and every textbook. When I saw what she had on her desk, I, was, I remember one morning I was sitting there and I was reading all the little things. She had a glass, she had a wooden desk but she had a glass on top of the desk and then under the glass she had all these little things, notes that she would write to herself. And she had this, um, if I fail to prepare, I'm preparing to fail. Now, that thing, I wrote it down and you know, I am, I am 60 years of age. Can you imagine that? And from eight or nine, I forget how old I was, when I first saw that, I have never, ever forgotten those words. Why? Because God prepared those words for me to see, to carry me into a place, to carry me with a certain perspective, to carry me into greater success, um, and so the Lord helped me that day to put a building block in my foundation of life 
uh, my foundation of Christian character, my foundation of natural thoughts and vision. He put a building block in there that has been foundational in everything that I've done in my life. And he's wanting to do that with the word of God for you. Some of you, sickness and disease is getting ready to hit you on the heels. Some of you, there are issues that are getting ready to confront you if they have not, if they have not already. But we say we are Christians and we say we believe. Many of us, and people get upset at me because I will tell them when they come to me and they say, well, pastor, I am believing, etc., etc., etc. And I say, no, you're not believing. Because foundationally, you have not established your ability to believe. You have established your ability to acknowledge that God works. You have established your ability to recognize and affirm that God has done something in my neighbor's life and God has done something in someone else's life and God has the ability to do something. But then, does God have the ability to do it in your life? The only way God has the ability to do it into your life is when you have established the foundation. Let me give you a rule of thumb when it comes to God's ability, or we call it, the, the word we use in scripture, or the word we use in Christianese is anointing. Anointing, the scripture says in, in, in the book of Isaiah, I think the 10th chapter, it says the anointing destroys the yoke. Well, hold on a second now. The anointing destroys the yoke. Well, are you anointed? Am I anointed? Every Christian, every believer, ought to be anointed. Interestingly enough, even an angel was, anointing was ascribed to an angel. It said that Satan, or Lucifer, was his name then, Lucifer was, not is, was the anointed cherub that covers. My God. So anointing, the gravity of that word, is an empowering ability of God but that empowering ability of God does not come because we become a Christian. That ability of God does not come because we are able to parrot what Pastor Watson or Bishop so-and-so or what Gail put on our Facebook page and we clicked on like or what Nikki put on our Facebook page and we clicked on like. Those are not the things that cause us to walk in the divine empowerment of anointing. Anointing or the ability of God to work in and through us is directly related to our knowledge of the Word of God. Woo! Good, good, good God have mercy on us. The ability, the empowering for anointing or with anointing is directly related to our knowledge of the Word of God. Many of us know how to use this phone better than we know how to get to the Word of God. Let me say it again. The anointing, God's empowering ability. I can click on my Facebook friend's post that says, you know, click on this and God will bless me. I can affirm in my mind that God's word is powerful. I can affirm in my mind and even speak it to a great extent with my mouth that I know that God is a healer, that God is a deliverer, that God can do great things. I can affirm all of these things but the affirmation does not create the ability. The ability is created, the ability to walk in God's empowering, anointed presence is directly related to your knowledge of the Word of God. If I took somebody out of, an, out of a culture that never had a, an automobile, and 
I put an automobile in front of them and the keys are on the dashboard um, and let's say one of these new cars that you don't really put a key into an ignition you know the key is there they would come to the car you know because I remember when I first got into one of those cars I sat there and I looked around and said where is the ignition well the same thing would happen as a Christian we look around and we say well God I see your Bible God, I see your logo. I must be first at doing what I have just communicated. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Yes. You see, we can, uh, and Michael, Michael K. just said something that's interesting. You know, a, a preacher, uh, a minister can speak above their level of anointing but the usual thing is that there is very little manifestation but when a preacher a teacher a man or a woman of faith gets up and begins to minister or share with revelation from what they have from the stripes they have uh, from what they have commanded throughout their lives, what they have, the Bible says it, I think, best, what they have touched and what they have felt, what they have handled. I think Peter said it in the, one of the books that bears his name. He says, we don't come to just tell you what we have heard, but we come to tell you about what we have touched, what we have handled, what we have experienced. My God. And the living word of God is important. Because it says, the, my, my child, let my words, attend to my words. If you don't attend to the pot and the fire, it burns. Amen. If you don't attend to your teeth, they eventually fall out. If you don't attend to paying your taxes in the United States, the IRS eventually comes after you. He says, attend, attend rather attend to my word take every take every opportunity to get into the word of god take every opportunity to saturate yourself with the word of god you know we study economics and we study politics i mean i remember in my um, in college I, I i thought of majoring in um in in politics and uh, I, I decided not to and then I thought of majoring in economics and accounting, and I decided not to. And eventually I majored in information technology. And uh, I mean, I loved it. My life was saturated with it. I mean, I enjoyed it immensely. But I mean, morning, noon, and night, I would be involved with computers. Um, my friends and I would play computers without having computers like they, that we have today. You need to begin to use the Word of God and saturate yourself with the Word of God so that Word begins to be what is absolutely necessary to give you life. Now, let me get to this revelation and uh, pronouncement over you. The Hebrew word for health in the 22nd verse of, Rome, of Proverbs chapter 4, um, the Hebrew word um, for health 
in verse 22 is the same word that we use for medicine. And so Isaac Leeser's translation of the Bible says it this way. In Exodus 15, 26, Isaac Leeser's translation of Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord, thy physician. So Proverbs 4, 22 says, the word of God is medicine. And then Exodus 15, 26 says that the Lord says in Exodus 15, 26, in Isaac Leeser's translation of the Bible, I am your physician. Well, if he is indeed our physician, it means that he has made preparation to restore our health when our health is in question. Or he has made provision to stop us ahead of time from getting into unhealthy, physically unhealthy situations. Now, because I have issues, others have issues, it doesn't mean that God's word is not true. I, I then, again, we are at now, Exodus 15, Exodus 15, 26, you see, I mean, such a great revelation of God, such a great revelation of the Word of God, um, such a great revelation of what God wants for us. I, I want us to take a look. Remember I said, many of us, we agree that God is a healer. We agree that God is powerful, but will he use it for us? In Matthew 8, when the young man came to him, the leprous young man came to him, he says, Jesus, I know you can heal. Jesus, I understand you have the power to heal, but, 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 will you do it for me? Is that power available to me? Is that ability available to me? Uh, and he cried unto the Lord, the scripture says, Exodus 15, 25 and 26. I'm going to have to read this quickly. I'm almost out of time. And he said, and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them and said, is the Lord proving you? And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, amen, and will give ear to his commandment, remember what Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 said, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these, or I will allow none of these diseases upon thee, which I have allowed upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord thy physician. I am the Lord thy physician. And so when we are confronted with sickness, when we are confronted with disease in our, in our body or in, our, in, in, in the physical body of a friend, or the physical body of a relative. How do we handle it? Because we know that God is a healer in our mind. But has that mental revelation come to where Paul says it is an inner man revelation, where it is no longer just a written revelation. It is no longer just a spoken revelation by someone around us, but it, is, it becomes a living rhema revelation. Listen to this. In the New English Bible, that part of um, Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord, your healer. The Leeser translation says, For I, the Lord, am thy physician. This is Exodus 15, 26. The basic English, the Bible in basic English says, I am the Lord, your life giver. Oh my God. I am the Lord, your life giver. You know, I get around people and I'll tell them, you know, I can pray for you and I can do many things to help you and to have miracles occur in your life. But the greatest miracle for you, my friend, is when you have heard my voice talk about the power and the ability in God's word and you take that word and you begin 
to eat that word morning, noon, and night. You begin to enjoy that word, and then the revelation changes your life's destiny. That revelation is a dramatic, dramatic, empowering ability that only comes from God. And that's why God puts different people in our lives. He puts people that believe in the areas of finances so that um, we are ready for those challenges. He puts people in the area of healing and health with the word so that when we are confronted, we are ready for the confrontation and the contending. I want you to go back and, and watch this today. Then the Rotherham translation says this, I am Yahweh, thy physicians, my, God, my thy physician. The young literal translation says, I, Jehovah, am healing thee. The Smith Godspeed translation says, For I, the Lord, make you immune to diseases. Oh my God. Now, if this is the word of God, what have we been living all this time? We've been teaching people how to get money focused on that. We've been teaching people how to maintain resources. We've been teaching people how to not wear earrings and not wear, not fix their hair, not wear short clothes, not do this, not do that. We have been teaching people what not to do, but we have not been taking the time to carry our Christian brothers and sisters as leaders now. We have been, not been taking the time to teach our people how to walk in the divine, how to walk in Christ, how to walk in an atmosphere of glory, because you have the ability to do just that. When Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 come alive, when Exodus 15, 25 through 26 come alive, we walk in the power of Christ, in the atmosphere of the divine. Time is up, so let me make a declarative prayer over you this morning. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, <coughs> right now, God, I thank you that, God, you're speaking to each one of us right now, and you're saying you are the God that heals us. You are the God that delivers us. You are watching over your very word to perform your healing word, that has been manifested usward. You are the Lord that healeth me. You are the God that heals all who are viewing us today. And you're healing us right now. The word contains the ability to produce what it says. It has its ability to produce. You are the God that heals and your word is a healing manifestation. And you're healing us right now. Your word is full. My God, I feel the anointing. My God, my God, my God, my God. I feel the anointing of God. My God, my God, my God. Your word, my God. Your God, your word is full of healing power. And we receive your healing power right now. Now, faith. We receive your healing power, Medosha Karaba, right now. We receive the healing word and the healing that is in the word of God right now. Healing is built in to God's nature and God's nature is built in to his word. Oh, Jesus, God is in me. And so built into me is healing, built into me is a resurgence and a restoration ability of the Word of God. My body is the temple of God. My body is the temple of the Lord that healeth me. God is bigger than sickness and God is bigger than Satan. My God. God is dwelling inside of me, healing me right now. The Lord that healeth me is my shepherd. I do not lack healing this morning. 
My body is in contact with the Lord that healeth me. My body has to respond to God's healing power and God's nature, his very healing nature is at work in me right now. Healing is in God and God is in me. I thank you, Father, right now because you are my healer. And you are healing me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch them, uh -huh. restore them, strengthen them. Time is up, my friends. Time is up, my friends, but time is not up for you. There is a restoring power. Don't let the enemy steal from you this morning. Don't let the enemy destroy uh, your destiny or the destiny of your loved one this morning. Don't let the enemy mess with God's best. Amen. Don't let the enemy mess with God's blessed. So God's best and God's blessed you are. And the satanic kingdom is no match for the power of the word of God. Romans, I don't know why I'm saying Romans. It was the second time I think I've said it. Um, but it's uh, Proverbs 4, 22-22. My, 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 my son, my child, incline, attend, study, because... The Word of God is medicine to all your flesh. Have a wonderful day and live it in Christ Jesus.